My dear junior four students, how are you? I hope that you're fine. Today we're going to start uh, reading our uh, new reader. Uh, we already introduced it in the intro video. So please, if you didn't watch this video, please make sure that you watch it before you start reading with me in this new one. Uh, we're going to work an audio. I want you to listen carefully to the audio and I want you to open with me uh, your story. We're going to start page one and we are going to listen to the audio together. This is how page one looks like. You have on the on the left a picture for Captain Jack Sparrow and we're going to start chapter one called Jack Sparrow's Return. Okay, I want you to follow with me and we're going to work the audio together. Let's listen. Chapter one, Jack Sparrow's Return. The moon was high above a dark ocean. A stone prison stood above a beach. A group of guards carried six wooden boxes to the prison wall and threw them into the ocean below. Suddenly, there was a gunshot inside one of the boxes. An arm reached through the newly made hole and opened the box. It was Captain Jack Sparrow, the smartest pirate who ever sailed the ocean. As he looked around, his gold tooth shone in the moonlight. Jack seemed calm at first. Then his eyes grew round with fear, and he quickly searched the box. He found it, his hat. He placed the hat on his head and smiled. He reached into the box again. Sorry, my friend, he said. He pulled hard at the leg bone of the other body in the box. With the bone in his hands, he lowered one end into the water. Then he rowed the box toward his ship, the Black Pearl. Gibbs, a fine old pirate, was waiting on the Pearl for Jack's return. He helped his captain onto the ship. Jack took a piece of cloth from his jacket and looked at it carefully. So, you found something, asked a toothless pirate named Leech. Every man on the ship wanted news about the treasure. Yes, but I haven't studied it yet, Jack said. Suddenly, a small monkey jumped in front of Jack and screamed, it took the piece of cloth and ran into the sails. When the moon shone on the monkey, its skin disappeared. Only its bones were left. This was Captain Barbosa's monkey. And, like its owner, it was cursed. It was the living dead. Jack hated the animal. He took out his gun and shot at it. The monkey fell and dropped the cloth, but quickly jumped up again. It smiled. One of the pirates caught the piece of cloth. It's a key, he said. It's even better than a key, Jack said. It's a drawing of a key. The sailors didn't understand. They looked at Gibbs. Captain, Gibbs said, we wanted gold and... Jack turned to his men. What do keys do? he asked. They unlock things, Leech said, suddenly excited. Important things, Gibbs said. He imagined chests full of gold. So, we're going to unlock something. Jack shook his head. No, we don't have the key yet, so we can't unlock anything, stupid. The sailors looked at Jack. So, we're going to find the key? Gibbs asked. A key won't help us, Jack said impatiently. We don't know what it opens. Please, he added, try to understand. So, which way are we going? Another pirate asked. Ah, yes, Jack opened his compass. On his last adventure, this compass took him to Isla de Muerta 
and the hidden treasure. But this time he seemed unhappy when he looked at it. He closed it quickly and waved his arm. Pull up the sails. Let's go that way, he finally said, pointing toward the ocean. Captain, Gibbs asked. I'll plan our trip later. Now hurry and start sailing, Jack ordered. The men were unhappy, but prepared to sail. The captain's acting a little strange, one pirate said quietly to Gibbs. Yes, Gibbs answered. He doesn't know where we're going. Okay, guys, before we complete, I want you to go back to the first page, the one that we started with, and it started by talking about Captain Jack Sparrow being in prison. He was imprisoned. And this happened after the last, the end of part one, the one that we talked about in the intro. So now he was in prison and he was able to escape from this prison. Okay, he was locked inside a box and this box was thrown in the ocean. So what did he do? He had a gun, so he shot the cover of the box. So the box went open and he came out of the box. And suddenly he felt fear why and he kept searching for the box for something until he found his hat he was in love with his hat and he couldn't imagine going around without wearing his famous hat over his head after he found his hat he put his hand again inside the box and he got out a bone and he said sorry friend why did he say this do you remember when i told you that uh Captain Jack Sparrow and part of his crew, they were cursed with the moonlight curse so that their body turns into uh, bones, a skeleton when they are in moonlight. Now they are in the ocean and it's night. So once he pulled, he put his hand inside, he wasn't locked in the box alone. They, there were other members from the crew. The crew, this is the staff working with him on the ship. So once he pulled a bone, it was a bone for from one of his friends, since they are all look like bones under the moonlight. So he pulled a bone of one of them and he used it like a paddle to move the box forward. Do you remember the battle that we took in the vocabulary? So he moved the box forward until he reached his ship. And his ship, we said, it's called what? The Black Pearl. Let's see the Black Pearl together. Can you see it in the picture? I told you before that it was called Black Pearl because it's all colored black, uh, the ship itself and the sails, like you see in the picture. And it's very, very valuable and precious to Captain Jack Sparrow. This is why it was called a pearl. Once he went on board the ship, he found his friends, the, he, the rest of the crew. He said that he found something and they were asking him, what is this thing? And he got it out of his bucket. But before he kept talking about this what happened a monkey came and he stole this thing from his hands okay and captain jack sparrow was very angry from the monkey and he shot him with the gun but the monkey didn't die why because the monkey was cursed too this is how you lo you look like under the moonlight the cursed people the monkey is one of the cursed ones so this is why under the moonlight you can see his body only like bone. This picture is for, Miss, for Captain Jack Sparrow when he was cursed. And the monkey was the same. Whenever he stands in moonlight, his body turned to bones. So once Jack Sparrow shot him, the monkey couldn't die. This is why they call the cursed people living dead. So let's continue. Okay, after Captain Jack Sparrow shot the monkey and he fell down, he didn't die, of course, because we said that we call them the living dead. So he dropped the piece of cloth that he had in his hand. And Captain Jack Sparrow took this piece, uh, piece of cloth and he showed it to the rest. What was this cloth look like? It was looking like this picture. If you can watch it with me, I'll get it bigger. It was a piece of cloth with a drawing of a key on it. So when, uh, when Captain Jack Sparrow was talking to his crew, he said that this is the key and they were asking what, the, what did this key lo uh, unlock? And he told them this is not a key yet, it's only a picture, it cannot unlock anything. Okay, so we have to go and search for this key. When they said that, he said, okay, if we go and search for this, we don't even know this key opens what, or it's a key for what, we don't know yet. So they kept asking him, okay, what should we do now? So where shall we go and to where shall we sail? So he opened his compass. 
what is this compass this is how it looks like okay he had a compass that keeps like pointing to places where treasures and chests are so whenever he he is searching for a treasure he follows his compass. so he opened the compass and he said that they are going to sail to a certain direction and he said here that the compass was pointing to a place called Isla de Muerta. Isla de Muerta, this is an island, it's a name of an island in Spanish, okay, and they were going to this island, Isla de Muerta, okay, where the treasure is hidden. And then they said that you have to pull up the sails, means to get the sails of the ship open, like the picture that we see here and they started sailing towards the island that they were talking about and they captain jack sparrow said that he's going to plan later what's going to happen once they reach this island uh, now we are on page two the last two lines we're going to complete listening and complete reading in the caribbean town of port royal elizabeth swan was on her knees in her wedding dress her tears mixed with the rain Around her were overturned chairs and no husband. Slowly, she went inside to wait. Through her tears, she saw a man come into the church. With him were an officer and a group of soldiers who were pushing a prisoner. The prisoner was the man she wanted to marry, Will Turner. Will! Elizabeth called. What's happening? I don't know, Will said sadly. You look beautiful, he added softly. You, free the prisoner immediately, said a loud voice from the door. It was Elizabeth's father, Governor Swan. He looked angrily at the officer. The officer didn't move. Governor Swan studied the man's face. Cutler Beckett, he asked finally. It's Lord Beckett now, the man replied. Lord or not, do you have a reason to arrest this man? I do. Mr. Mercer, Beckett said to a man next to him. Mercer gave him a letter. Governor Swan looked at it. This letter isn't for the arrest of Will Turner, he said. This is for the arrest of Elizabeth Swan. Is it? Beckett asked. My mistake. Arrest her, he ordered. The soldiers took Elizabeth. Why? Elizabeth asked angrily. Beckett didn't answer. He produced two more letters. Here's the letter for William Turner, and this one orders the arrest of James Norrington. Do you know where he is? Commodore Norrington left here some months ago, the governor answered quickly. We don't know where he is. Why are you arresting us? Elizabeth asked bravely. Beckett looked at his prisoners. You helped a pirate to escape. The punishment for that is death, he said happily. You remember Jack Sparrow, don't you? Will looked at Elizabeth. Captain Jack Sparrow, they said together. Yes, Beckett answered. He turned to his men. Take them away. Okay, so let's stop here again. And we are talking back about Captain Jack Sparrow. But this time we are talking about Captain Jack Sparrow with Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. Swan. I told you before that they were with Captain Jack Sparrow on the Black Pearl, but now, uh, as I told you, they were in love and they were planning to get married, and Elizabeth was waiting for uh, Will Turner to come to the church for the wedding, but he was late and suddenly he entered, but he wasn't alone. There was a police officer arresting him, and she was asking what happened, and they told her that they have to... Um, arrest Will Turner because they want him they want him to tell them uh, to tell them where did uh, Captain Jack Sparrow go so Elizabeth wasn't alone here okay she was there with her father uh, Governor Swan who ordered the officers to let go of Will Turner 
But uh, the officer that uh, the governor Swan knew, his name was Cutler Beckett. Uh, he told them that you have to leave uh, Will Turner. And he told him, no, I'm not going to do this. I already have a letter to arrest him. And he showed him the letter. He told him, no, this one is for Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth not for Will. So he said, okay, that's for her. So arrest her too. And he showed him also a letter for Will Turner in another letter to arrest uh, Commodore Norrington. He was asking about him, but they said that he left months ago and they don't know where did he go. So now, Lord Beckett, he arrested two. He arrested Will Turner and he arrested Elizabeth Swan. Uh, when they asked why did you uh, arrest us, he said because you helped a pirate to escape. We said already that uh, Jack Sparrow was in prison and he escaped from prison. So now they think that Will Turner and Elizabeth helped Jack Sparrow to escape from this prison. This is why the, the officers are arresting them. They were shocked to know that Jack Sparrow was out of prison and uh, the officer shouted, take them away. Okay, let's complete listening. Captain Jack Sparrow had his own problems. Alone in his room on the Black Pearl, he held his compass tightly in his hand. He looked at it and quickly closed it. Then he shook it and looked at it again. Not good. He reached for a drink. The bottle was empty. He left the room to find another bottle. The drink's cupboard was almost empty. He smiled when he saw a bottle on the lower shelf. He opened it and turned it over. Sand fell onto the floor. You have no more time, Jack, a voice said suddenly. Jack turned. In front of him was a man's face covered with animals and plants from the bottom of the ocean. Bootstrap? Jack asked. Bill Turner? Yes, Jack Sparrow. You look good? Jack looked at the sailor. You don't, he said. Is this a dream? No, Bootstrap said. He gave Jack a drink. You got the pearl back, he said. Your son helped me, Jack told him. Now Bootstrap was surprised. William? A pirate? Yes, Jack said. He's too honest, though, he added. So, why are you here? Davy Jones sent me. Bootstrap answered, I'm sorry that I fought against you. Everything went wrong after we took your ship. I was cursed and at the bottom of the ocean. I couldn't move and I couldn't die. Jack looked afraid. Then Davy Jones came to me and made an offer. If I spend one hundred years on his ship, I can rest after that. Bootstrap looked at his old captain. He wants you. He owns you too, Jack. He lifted the pearl from the ocean floor for you. You were her captain for thirteen years. Jack started to speak, but Bootstrap stopped him. You can't stop the curse, he said. Your soul will spend a lifetime on his ship. Davy's ship, the Flying Dutchman, already has a captain, Jack said quickly. He doesn't need me. Bootstrap shook his head sadly. Captain Jack Sparrow never stopped fighting. It's Davy Jones's world for you, Jack. Jones will send his monster, the Kraken, and pull the pearl back down to the bottom of the ocean, and you with it. Any idea when? Jack asked. He tried not to sound worried. Bootstrap lifted his arm and pointed to Jack's hand. Jack stepped away, but it was too late. There was a black mark on his hand. He was now a marked man. He'll find you, Bootstrap said. Jack looked up, but Bootstrap Bill was gone. Jack screamed and ran through the ship. Get up, he shouted to his sleeping men. Hurry! Then... He tied a cloth around his hand, covering the black mark. He didn't want anyone to see it. 
Gibbs found Jack behind the mast. Where are we going? he asked. We're going to land, Jack shouted. Which port? Gibbs asked. Land, it doesn't matter where. The monkey jumped down from the mast onto Jack's shoulder and knocked his hat into the ocean. Jack's hat? Gibbs cried to the other men. He knew the captain loved his hat. Turn the ship around. No, Jack said quickly. Leave it. His men were surprised. Gibbs turned to Jack. What's coming after us? He asked quietly. Uh, before we complete, let's explain this part. Okay, we started this part talking about Captain Jack Sparrow inside his room, and he was thinking about the treasure and the key that he has, and uh, he couldn't find any drink, so he went to the room where they keep the drink bottles to get one, but the room was empty except for one bottle, but when he took it and he turned it upside down, only sand fell from it, means there was no drink anymore. At this time, he heard a voice telling him, you have no more time, Jack. Jack was surprised to hear, who is this voice? I'm going to show you who is this voice. Okay, this is uh, Bootstrap Bill, or Bill Turner, the father of Will Turner. As you see in the picture, he said here that his body and his face were covered with animals and plants from the bottom of the ocean because he was cursed in the first part and he was cursed to live underwater for the le for the rest of his life and this is what he already told jack about and when he told him now this is bootstrap talking that jack sparrow already got back his black pearl and jack sparrow told him the one who helped me to get the ship back was your son okay will turner and uh, bootstrap was surprised to know that his son is a pirate too now and what did Bootstrap tell, uh, told Jack? He told him that um, that he is sorry that he was fighting against him. Means he was not at his side. He was fighting at uh, Barbosa's side in the first part. Okay. And that he was sorry that his ship was taken from him. And he said that I was cursed to stay at the bottom of the ocean for the rest of my life. And he couldn't move and he couldn't die. He couldn't die because I told you that the cursed ones are living dead. They cannot die. And he couldn't move because he was forced to stay under the ocean, at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, he told him, then Davy Jones came and offered me, gave me an offer. Who is Davy Jones? This is Davy Jones. As you see, he looks very scary. And he came to a bootstrap bill and he told him that I can take you out from the bottom of the ocean i can get you out of the ocean only on one condition that you spend 100 years on my ship and the ship for davy jones as we said before its name is the flying dutchman and he said that if i listen to him i am going to rest i can rest after that for the rest of my life he wouldn't be locked at the bottom of the ocean again and then bootstrap told jack sparrow why is davy jones going after him okay he said that he wants you he owns you too and jack was surprised why do i owe him and why he owns uh, he owns me okay he said that you uh, you owe him because he lifted your black pearl from the bottom of the ocean at the first part when he was fighting Barbosa, the Black Pearl sank under the ocean. So Davy Jones got the ship back, back to the uh, surface of the ocean and Jack Sparrow was able to get his ship again. So he told him that Davy Jones did this for you. He got you, ba he got you back your ship and he made you a captain for this ship for 13 years. So you owe him. You have to listen to anything that he tells you to do. And he told him also that Davy Jones wants Jack Sparrow to be, uh, to work on his ship, the Flying Dutchman. You cannot escape from this. So what did Jack Sparrow says? He says that Davy Jones already got his ship, the Flying Dutchman, and he already has a captain. So why he needs me? Okay. Bootstrap told him that this is the world for Davy Jones. 
means the whole world, the ocean world is all controlled by Davy Jones. And if you didn't listen to him, he is going to send his monster, the Kraken, and this Kraken is going to destroy your ship. Let's see the Kraken together. So this is how it looks like. It's very scary and it got strong arms that can break ships. And he told him, if you didn't listen to David Jones, uh, David Jones orders, he's going to send this monster to break your ship, the Black Pearl. So he told him, any idea when Davy Jones is going to come and take me? A bootstrap, he caught the hand of Jack Sparrow into his arms and he showed him something. He showed him a mark. After he left his hand, there was a black mark, okay, over Jack Sparrow's hand. And he said that he is going to find you from this mark okay as long as you can see this mark in your hand means that davy jones is coming after you jack sparrow became very afraid and frightened once he saw the mark on his hand and he couldn't know what to do and he was scared from davy jones because now he is controlled by davy jones and he has to listen to what he will tell him to do and once he looked at the black mark, mark and he raised his head, he couldn't see Bootstrap, he disappeared. So he ran out of the room and he shouted as his, uh, at his crew, uh, let's start sailing. And uh, when he was shouting, the monkey for uh, Captain Barbosa, now he, it was staying with Jack Sparrow, this monkey jumped on the shoulder of Jack Sparrow and he knocked down Jack Sparrow's hat. This is the famous hat for Jack Sparrow. Can you see it? He loved he loves it very much and it's very special uh, um, an unusual shape of a hat. So he loved it very much. So the monkey kicked this hat inside the water and all the people working or the on the ship they kept screaming stop the ship let's go back to get the hat but Captain Jack Sparrow shouted at them and he said no leave the hat we have to sail very quickly and they were all shocked because captain jack sparrow never leaves his hat so once he says go and leave it this means that whatever is going on is something serious and dangerous okay let's listen to the this part again the last part in chapter one we are now on page six okay Jack Sparrow's hat sailed far away from the Black Pearl. A sailor on a fishing boat picked it up. He liked it and put it on his head. When another sailor tried to take it from him, the two men began to fight. Suddenly, the boat shook. The sailors looked around, then down at the hat. They tried to throw it into the ocean. Too late. Their boat broke into pieces and was pulled down into the ocean. Okay, what happened now is that when the hat of Mr. Jack Sparrow fell in the ocean, another ship was sailing away. Now the Black Pearl sailed away from this place and the hat kept at the place. And another two sailors, they found, they found this hat and one of them took the hat and he put it on his head. And the other one, he was fighting for it. He wanted to take it from his friend to wear it. And while they were fighting over the hat, something happened. The boat was shaking very strong. And suddenly it was broke into pieces and it went sink down the ocean. Okay, and it was too late to save this boat. And the water was calm again after this boat sank. Why did this boat sink and what happened to it? It was the Kraken. It was Davy Jones. He sent the Kraken to break the ship uh, where Jack Sparrow is on. And because Jack Sparrow is very famous with his hat, so once the Kraken saw the hat uh, on this ship, he thought that the one wearing the hat is Jack Sparrow. So this is why he broke this boat, thinking that like this, he killed Jack Sparrow. But it wasn't Jack Sparrow, it was only his hat and they were other two sailors sitting in this boat. Now we finished chapter one, let's start reading chapter two. Chapter two is called The Search for the Black, the Black Pearl. 
Chapter 2 The Search for the Black Pearl Two guards took Will Turner into Lord Beckett's office. Are you going to free Elizabeth? Will asked. If you help me, I'll free her, Beckett answered. We want you to find Captain Sparrow. I want you to get something that belongs to him. You want the Black Pearl? Will said. Beckett was surprised. The Black Pearl? No, I want something that's smaller and much more important. Something that Sparrow carries at all times. A compass. Bring back the compass, then I will free Elizabeth. Will Turner angrily left Beckett's office and went to Elizabeth's room in the prison building. Governor Swan followed him and heard them talking. Jack's compass. Why does Beckett want that? His reason isn't important, Will said. I'll find Jack and bring him back to Port Royal. Then we'll both be free. How are you going to find him? Elizabeth asked, worried. Her voice showed her fear. Tortuga. I'll start there. I won't stop until I find him. Then I'll return and marry you. So, now at the beginning of Chapter 2, we, find, we go again to the prison where Will Turner and Elizabeth were locked. And at this part, uh, Lord Beckett, he asked Will Turner to go and get the compass uh, from Jack Sparrow. Do you remember the picture of the compass that we said? This one. He wants him to get this compass. And at first, Will Turner thought that he needs the Black Pearl, the ship itself. But he told him, no, I just want the compass. And he didn't know why, but he told him, once you get me this compass, I will let Elizabeth go free. She will go out of the prison. So this is what Will did. He went to the uh, room where Elizabeth was locked, and he told her that he's going to go after Jack Sparrow, and he will bring him back to Port Royal. This is the place where they are now. And he is going to get the compass from him and free uh, Elizabeth. Uh, she told him, how are you going to find Jack Sparrow? He told her, okay, I'm going to go to Tortuga. Tortuga, this is a port where Jack Sparrow most of the time uh, stay there with his black pearl. Okay, so he said that I'm going to start looking for him at Tortuga. And then once I get the compass, I will get it back and I will set you free and then we can get married. Okay, now let's complete listening for the rest of chapter two. Now we are page seven. Will Turner started his search immediately. He went to Tortuga because Jack often stayed there. It was the dirtiest port in the Caribbean, a place for drunken pirates who wanted adventures. When he arrived, Will saw a friend of Jack's, a woman with red hair and a red dress. Her name was Scarlet. I haven't seen him for a month. Was Scarlet. I haven't seen him for a month, Scarlet said angrily. When you find him, give him a message. She lifted her hand and hit Will across the face. I don't know about Jack, but there's a ship with black sails at an island south of here said an old boatman. Give me some money and I'll take you to it. The boatman took Will to the island, and there they found the black pearl on its side on the beach. The boatman refused to go closer, so Will jumped into the water. He swam to the beach and then, very wet, walked across to the ship. There was nobody there, but he found an old fire in the sand. The firewood was still warm. Jack was near. Jack, Will shouted. Jack Sparrow, Mr. Gibbs. He pulled out his sword and went into the forest. There he noticed a small red bottle on the ground. Gibbs, Will thought, that's his bottle. He picked it up. A fishing line was tied to the bottle, and Will put his hand on it. Then, suddenly, he noticed 
two eyes in a tree, and an arm that pulled the line hard. Will was pulled off his feet. As he hung by his leg from a tree, he saw a group of islanders. They had bite marks on their faces and bodies, and they were wearing bones around their necks. The islanders ran toward Will, and he kicked some of them to the ground with his free leg. Come here and fight, he shouted at one of the men. The man quickly shot a drug into Will's neck. Will stopped moving, and the men cut him down from the tree. Now, after we listen to this part on page seven, let's discuss it together. Here, Will Turner is searching for uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, and he went to Tortuga to search for him there, since this is the port where Captain Jack Sparrow uh, spent most of his time. So he went there, and he found uh, a woman. She's, uh, she was a friend of Jack Sparrow. He asked her about him, but she didn't know where he is. A boatman saw him, and he told him that he saw a black ship uh, on an island near here. It's from the south, from Tortuga. And he told him, if you pay me some money, I will take you there. So this is what Will uh, did. He gave him some money, and the boatman took him, uh, took him to this ship. It was the Black Pearl. It was the black ship with the black sails. And it was uh, on, uh, on board of this uh, island. Uh, he went down and he went to the ship. He couldn't find anyone on the ship, but he found fire by the shore and it was still warm. So he thought that they were just here. He kept calling their names, Jack, Mr. Gibbs, but no one answered. He found a bottle in the sand here, which looks like a bottle of drink that Mr. Gibbs always drink. He pulled it out and uh, there was a fishing line okay uh, tied to this uh, to this bottle and will put his hand on this line suddenly he noticed two eyes inside the trees people looking at him and one of them pulled the line so will was pulled by his, one of his feet and he was hanging up a tree upside down okay and then he saw a group of islanders uh, those are the people who are living on this island. They attacked him and they had bite marks over their faces and their bodies. As if someone bite them, like cuts on their faces and on their bodies. And they, we they are wearing bones around their necks. Okay. Uh, on page 8, the top part, he said that the islanders, all of them, they ran towards Bill. And... Uh, he started to kick some of them with the free leg. He was hanged from one leg, so he started kicking them with the other leg, pushing them away. And then he kept screaming at them, come here, fight me. Uh, but one of the men caught him and he put a drug like medicine uh, inside his neck. And Will was unconscious, means he wasn't there, like he put them into sleep. Okay, now let's listen to the part after this one, and we shall complete our story. In her small room in Port Royal Prison, Elizabeth waited. She was tired and closed her eyes. Then she heard the sound of keys, and a guard opened the door. Come quickly, her father said, stepping out of the shadows behind the guard. What's happening? Elizabeth asked. You can return to England, Governor Swan said. I've found a ship for you. Hawkins, the captain, is an old friend of mine. They ran quickly out of the prison. The governor took Elizabeth to a waiting vehicle pulled by two horses, but she refused to get in. I'm waiting for Will, she said. We can't wait for Will's help the governor said. I'm not going to watch my daughter die. He pushed her inside and put a gun in her hand. Then he shut the door and quickly drove the vehicle to the ship. Near the port, the governor slowed the horses. Two men were waiting in the shadows. One of them wore a captain's hat. The governor jumped down from his seat and hurried to the men. Captain Hawkins, he said, 
happy to see his friend. But Hawkins didn't answer. The captain fell to the ground, covered in blood. The governor realized that the other man in the shadows was holding up the captain's dead body. Good evening, governor, the second man said, slowly cleaning blood from his knife with a cloth. Swan knew the man, Mercer, Beckett's assistant. Governor Swan ran back to the vehicle. Elizabeth, he shouted. Mercer called some soldiers. He smiled as he opened the vehicle door. It was empty. Where is she? Mercer said angrily. Who? Swan asked nervously. Mercer pushed the governor against the vehicle and shouted, Elizabeth! She never listened to me, the governor said and smiled. Take him away, Mercer ordered the soldiers. Okay, let's explain this part together. Now, we said that Will Turner went to find the compass to set Elizabeth free from prison. But while Elizabeth was waiting for Will to return, her father came into prison and he asked her to come quickly. He opened the prison and he got her out and he told her quickly, I have planned escape for you, a way to escape. There is a ship. And her captain, uh, Captain Hawkins, is my friend, and he's go you're going to go on the ship, and you're going to go away. You're going to escape. She told him, no, I'm going to wait for Will. He told her, no, I'm not going to wait and see you die. So they go, they went inside a vehicle, like um, uh, a small car, and it's not a car, of course. There was no cars at this time. It looks like a car, but it's pulled by horses. Okay, he put her inside the vehicle and there were two horses pulling this uh, vehicle and they started uh, going towards the ship. Once he saw the captain, Captain Hawkins, her father, Governor Swan, he ran to the captain to talk to him. But once he uh, reached the captain, he found that the captain was dead and there was another man holding the dead body of the captain in his arms and he knew that this man is Mercer, who is the assistant of Lord Beckett. And he knew that Mr. Mercer killed this captain because he didn't want Elizabeth to escape. And uh, Mercer shouted, where is Elizabeth? And he ran to the vehicle. Her father kept shouting, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. And once Mercer reached the vehicle and he looked inside, the vehicle was empty. Elizabeth was, wasn't inside. So he asked her father, where did she go? But her father told him, uh, I don't know. She never listens to what I say, and I don't know where did she go. Okay, let's see now what will happen in the last part of chapter 2, and we are on page 9. Let's listen together. Lord Beckett walked into his dark office and stopped. There's somebody here, he thought. Elizabeth stepped out of the shadows and lifted her father's gun. I have information, she said. You sent Will to find Jack Sparrow's compass, but it won't help you. I saw the treasure on Isla de Muerta, and you need to know something. Beckett smiled. You think that the compass only points to Isla de Muerta? You're wrong, Miss Swan. The cursed gold is not important. He pointed to a big world map. There is more than one treasure chest in these oceans, he said. Elizabeth pointed the gun at Lord Beckett's head. These letters on your desk will free Will Turner, she said. Sign them. Beckett stopped laughing and signed the letters. I want the compass, he said. Elizabeth took the letters, turned, and disappeared silently into the dark night. The following morning, the Edinburgh trader sailed from Port Royal. One of the sailors was Elizabeth. She was dressed in sailor's clothes, and none of the men on the ship noticed her. Okay, so this part here... Uh, we were talking about Elizabeth, 
who escaped from prison and now she went to Lord Beckett's office okay and she took some letters inside her hands these letters uh, are letters to set her free her and Will Turner and she took those letters to Lord Beckett to sign them she pointed the gun to his head and she told him you have to sign those letters so that we can be free and he told her I'm not going to do this until you get me the compass like I told Will but she told him no need for the compass I already know where is the cursed treasure if you remember in the introduction we talked together and I showed you a picture of this cursed treasure right let's see it together now and then uh, I will complete explaining this for you okay this is the cursed treasure that we saw before can you see it this is the treasure that uh, Captain Jack Sparrow and Barbosa were fighting for fighting about it and this is the treasure that Elizabeth was telling uh, Lord Beckett about it okay uh, she told him that you already know where is this treasure and it's on an island called Isla de Muerta okay and she told him that I can take you there and you can take this treasure and let us go free he told her no I'm not interested into this treasure I want the compass because the compass show places for other treasures too this is not the only treasure I'm looking for okay um, there are more than one treasure chest in these oceans so he he's very greedy he wants to get all the all the treasures in the ocean so this is why he needs the compass she told him okay these letters on your desk will set us free please sign them okay and he signed the letters and he said I want the compass she took the letters and she disappeared silently into the dark night and then the next morning there was a ship sailing from Port Royal called the Edinburgh Trader she went on the ship and she was dressed like a uh, sailors like sailors like a man can you see her in the picture uh, it, it didn't show that she's a woman and she went overboard the ship and none of the people working on this ship already knew her okay now uh, I want you to uh, look at this slide on the PowerPoint okay after you finish reading I want you to watch these two videos the first video here you are going to see the opening scene when Jack Sparrow was inside the box and how he got out of the box and he reached the black pearl you will also find the key drawing and uh, the moon the cursed uh, monkey under the moon and the piece of cloth with the drawing of the key and the discussion between uh, Captain Jack Sparrow and his crew and then you watch also the second video and this is when Jack met Bootstrap at the room of the drinks okay this is a very important scene I want you to watch those two scenes and I'm going to see you next time okay bye